Welcome everyone to the final installment of my series, A Songwriter's Notes on Songwriting. And uh, whether you're here for the first time just now, or hung with me uh, throughout, or checked it out from time to time, I thank you for, uh, for that. Uh, as always, I'd appreciate any comments that you'd like to leave, and uh, would love for you to subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, check out uh, songs that are posted on the channel. I have new ones uh, coming out all the time because I can't stop writing songs. Uh, so uh, today will be the uh, represent the kind of end of what I want to say in this series, which I hope has been helpful for you. I could talk endlessly about uh, songs and songwriting, but it would probably get a bit repetitive and more and more opinionated and subjective, which I've tried as much as possible to stay away from, although it's inevitable. Um, as it is today, I'm going to go uh, back over uh, the two points, uh, as I've thought about this summary, there are kind of two main points that I really want to leave you with, and I'll go over those in the second half of this. Um, and I've made these points repeatedly over the series. Before that, though, I want to kind of uh, first emphasize that my remarks are only about a somewhat narrow slice of um, in the universe of songwriting or making or creating music. Naturally, uh, and I've tried to emphasize this throughout, naturally they're filtered through my personal tastes, influences, and experiences. And um, second, as I said at the start of this series, my focus uh, has been on uh, pretty traditional Western popular music. So if you're more into more experimental or exotic stuff, go for it. That's not what this series has tried to cover. Maybe some of the things I've talked about will be helpful, but others probably won't be. The key point of all this is that music is really infinite in variety and possibilities. And like all art, it's an expression of you. Uh, the best way to interfere with that expression, really, I think, is to shy away from it. Pour yourself totally into it, is my advice. That doesn't, of course, guarantee success. There are a lot of fervent people who, who don't get anywhere or create something that, for more or less objective reasons, might not be that great. But it's a necessary condition to really put yourself into it, okay? You can't really express yourself without kind of going all into it with, with, with all your heart. That may mean from time to time that you look foolish in someone else's eyes, but I kind of doubt that there's ever been any artist who hasn't looked foolish to someone at some point, okay? Um, you know, what first comes to mind is Van Gogh was mm, criticized and laughed at through most of his life, his art was, uh, and I think he only sold one painting. Uh, so there are different measures of success. I think the key thing is to do it, and this is what I do, is to do it for yourself. Okay. Um, so I'll leave to you uh, to figure out how you get dedicated to your art. What this course has mostly been about, I think, is sharing with you some observations that I've made in the course of writing well over a hundred songs now. Um, of certain things that work and others that don't, breaking down some elements in songs in general, and sharing some approaches that have worked for me. I've tried to keep these things general enough uh, for you to find your own approach and style, staying more with kind of big picture things that relate to most every song. Okay, so with that disclaimer uh, out of the way, I want to briefly touch on how I've kind of gone through the songwriting elements before coming to these two overarching points that I, I hope are helpful to many of you. So aside from episodes 10 and 11, the last two, 
which were on structure, bridges, and arrangement. The rest of the series prior to that covered what I see as the four universal elements of songs, okay? Uh, harmony, by which I really mean a chord progression, rhythm, lyrics, assuming it's not an instrumental song, and melody, okay? We spent more time on harmony than any other part. I think there were four episodes on harmony. Uh, and that's partly because it's um, got some complexities that in some way make it easier to talk about because it's, it's fairly, um, it's, it's uh, easily subjected to analysis, okay? Um, but also, it's a kind of bedrock foundation of any song. I could give counterexamples of that point and even argue that the rhythmic groove that you find is more of a foundation. There are plenty of great two and three chord songs that are mostly about the groove. Uh, dance music, electronica, tends to be in that, uh, examples of that. But I'm more focused on kind of more traditional singer-songwriter music, where harmony mostly reigns supreme, okay? It's not to discount any of the other parts, particularly rhythm, which I uh, find incredibly important. But um, a lot of traditional songs have, um, not all by any means, but certainly you can find a lot that have a fairly simple, straightforward, rhythmic component but they're really about the harmony and then the melody and, and lyrics uh, along with them. So that said, I, I actually tend to see harmony and rhythm as very closely married to one another. When I sit down with my guitar to explore, what am I doing first? Well, uh, well before there are any uh, words or melody. I'm playing some sequence of chords. It may be just a couple, it may be several. And I'm doing it inevitably with some rhythm, okay? I'm not just kind of randomly strumming things uh, arrhythmically. That would be actually hard to do, you know, if you have any musical sensibility at all, which almost everybody does. So I'm inevitably playing these chords and kind of fooling around with them with some rhythm. And even a really simple rhythm is still a rhythm and can form a groove, okay? Four quarter notes in 4-4 four, four time can form a groove, okay? So it doesn't, I'm not trying to tell you that your rhythm has to be complex, um, but the rhythm and harmony are married kind of at the hip and together will form the foundation of your song in most cases. Um, and it has so much to do with um, what mood you're in, how you're feeling, what you're, what's channeling through you when you sit down to fool around at your instrument. <coughs> so, where do you create um, an original sound from harmony and rhythm? I'll get to the key point of that in a minute, but the, the main thing to emphasize is that there's a whole world of chord progressions and rhythms to discover. I've tried to stay away in this series from su suggesting concrete directions to go in in favor of helping you to be aware of the possibilities and see them in um, kind of an organized way so you're not overwhelmed and at sea about where to go. And that's, that's part of the problem that as um, musicians and songwriters we, we need to overcome and we can get stuck with is the possibilities truly are infinite. And therefore, I think if you don't have quite the right mindset about it, you can get like a deer in the headlights and not know where to go, okay? And I have some answers for that. So let's just kind of go over quickly, briefly, 
sort of these four parts and what I kind of the, the most salient points that I uh, discussed um, in the previous talks about them. One way to think about harmony was to start with the circle of fifths. Okay. Um, if you go back to the first few um, in the series, uh, you can find in the comments section a link to the circle of fifths or just Google circle of fifths. You can recognize, we recognized that, the, that most Western music is organized around what I call the home quadrant of the circle of fifths, which comprises the three major chords corresponding to the one, four, and five chords along with their relative minor chords. So for instance, in the C of key, uh, key of C, these would be C, F, and G for the one, four, five, and their relative minors, A minor, D minor, and E minor, okay? These six chords occupy a quadrant, one-fourth of the circle of fifths. That's why I talk about the home quadrant. So these are the, the home quadrant is, I think, inarguably, the most important um, harmonic elements, comprise the most important harmonic elements for traditional Western popular music, okay? The blues is totally built on that. Um, and most popular music since the 20s, 1920s, 1930s is really built on the blues in some sense. As I said during our, the four talks on harmony, you can be successful writing all your songs staying within the home quadrant. And by the way, changing keys doesn't change that. It just shifts where you are in that circle. Um, and the example that I threw out at that time was Van Morrison has made an incredible career writing songs very, very dominantly in the home quadrant. But it's also fun, really fun, to explore outside that home quadrant. And we talked about other triad chords, um, other than, other than tri simple uh, basic triad chords. There are more complex chords, such as suspensions. We talked about adding the two, four, and six notes of the scale of the key, or uh, chords with four or five notes uh, in them. And the circle of fifths uh, is a nice way, and as your playing and songwriting advances, a natural way, really, to think about where you are, what you're doing, and where you might want to go harmonically. Now, this is a good time, I think, to state again what I've said a hundred times already. When I'm writing songs, I never think about theory. Okay, I just don't. They don't, it, it doesn't enter my mind. These are observations after the fact, if you will, but the more you play and write, the feel for these things just kind of gets into your bones. And whether you're thinking cognitively about the fact that, that you're, mm, you're playing a suspension or a flat seven or something like that, um, and sometimes I confess, you know, I, I have that awareness because you know, it's been a long time I've been doing this. Uh, as, as, as the feel for these things get in your bones and your fingers and voice will more and more just kind of know where to go, okay? It's a big part of the joy of songwriting where your, your fingers, your voice, if you're singing, um, figure out the more you play where your mind and feeling want to take you, okay? I once heard an interview with Paul Simon. He was talking about writing, I think, maybe Bridge Over Troubled Waters. And he said, and he was talking about, he kind of had the first two lines of the music of a verse. And he said, um, and then I just kept going where I didn't want to go. And I always loved that line because it told me that there was something inside him, some feeling that he maybe at, at the start couldn't quite identify, couldn't figure out, couldn't articulate musically, okay? And uh, 
so he his fingers were taking him kind of down blind alleys, okay, until he hit on something that um, that was in line with where he wanted to go, okay, and that's really uh, there's probably no more important thing that I'd like you to take away from this series than that. Now, moving on to rhythm, which came next, I didn't have nearly as much to say about rhythm as harmony since there's not really an analogous organizing principle for rhythm. And because it's so specific to you and your sensibilities, harmony, if you're going to stay sort of in the popular music western tradition, you know, there are, there are both organizing principles like the circle of fifths, but also kind of um, uh, uh, traditional sounds. And it's that home quadrant kind of base of things, right, that you can depart from, but it's still sort of home. Rhythm is, I think, a lot more wide open. So it's hard to dig in and, I mean, you know, I could spend hours kind of playing different rhythms and grooves and I don't know what I'd say about them, though, except here is a rhythm, <laughs> you know. It's, it's not um, very amenable to uh, breaking down, okay. Um, most of what I had to say about <laughs> the rhythm su subject is that you need it in your music. And this may sound obvious, but I've heard lots of songs from amateur songwriters who haven't paid any attention to rhythm or, or it's an afterthought for them, and it shows in the song. There's a blandness to the song. Uh, they're just sort of playing the chord progression and, and don't have any feel to it, a groove. Um, there's a famous bass player who wrote a book saying groove, and of course this is from a bass perspective, uh, groove is the most important thing in song. I'm not going to dispute that. It's a really important thing, okay? Uh, so, uh, without a groove, by the way, the words and the melody will kind of fight one another because they're not grounded in that groove, okay? A, a groove has to come in at the start, you know, and again, when I sit down and start fooling around, you know, it, it'll, it'll change, but I'll, I'll just start in with some kind of strumming pattern or something that... I guess reflects how I'm feeling at the moment in some sense. Uh, and it might adjust in some ways as the feel of the song develops, but it's essential and foundational. Another way I emphasize rhythm is in connection with the lyrics. The phrases of the songs need to have rhythm, and I can't emphasize that enough. Sometimes this will even define the rhythm and groove of a song, as in, um, uh, my song, The Days, where, um, uh, which really began uh, with the phrase from a Cormac McCarthy book, um, the day to shape the days upon, the day to shape the days upon. There's a rhythm to that. And as that kind of rumbled around in my head, it developed into a groove, and I, I had a t simple two-chord progression. That's all it took, uh, and that turned into a song. Same thing for my song, Shorn, which began with the first line, I see faces in the trees. I see faces in the trees. Again, it's a rhythmic uh, phrase. So again, these phrases have rhythm to them, a cadence, if you like. If you repeat them, they take on a kind of groove. Often, um, I uh, will either develop or uh, find a start to a song when I'm out on a walk, and I just have a, a phrase comes into my head, or I'm turning around a little phrase in my head, and as I'm walking, I can start to feel the rhythm of it. So. In regards to lyrics, um, which again is tough to get into because it's like, you know, telling someone what they should write about, and I'm not going to do that. Um, there's infinite things to write about, and that's your personality. What I can uh, strongly recommend is that you pay attention to the rhythm of the words that are tumbling out, okay? 
and to try to find a adjust the words so that there is a rhythm to them. Okay. Um, so I think I said at the beginning of the series that I usually start with music and then write words. Uh, these two songs that I just mentioned are counterexamples. They actually started with a phrase. Um, if you listen for the rhythm and music of to a, a of a line a, a phrase of words that you really like, and melody is in there too. That's why I say music. There's there's even again English is not a tonal language, but just in the inflections there's a m kind of proto melody in the phrase. Okay, and if you listen for that, it can be a really great way to begin a song. So. Just because most of my songs, and I think the majority of songwriters also begin with music. Paul Simon says he always begins with music. I wonder if there are some exceptions. Um, some of my, I think my best songs and uh, favorite songs have started with a phrase. Okay. Um, my most recent song, which I'm still working on right now, came entirely out of a phrase that popped into my head one night as I was going to sleep. Uh, and the phrase is, you don't know you're different when you're drowning in the same. You don't know you're different when you're drowning in the same. Again, there's a rhythm, right? Okay. As I explored it with a few trial chords and trial rhythms, it was clear where it wanted to go. Okay. Again, starting with just a kernel of something, a rhythm, couple chords uh, repeated over and over, you'll be amazed at what can flower from that without a lot of thinking or effort, okay? Um, so again, this is, I'm trying to encourage you not to get that deer in the headlights at all the, uh, all the possibilities available to you in music. Just start somewhere and um, it can blossom, okay? Uh, so again, this is kind of this rhythmic element is the single most important thing I can tell you about writing lyrics without going into subject matter and style, which is exactly what I want to stay away from in this series. My big, finally, melody, my big message about melody um, was that once you have a lot, a substantial amount of the other three elements uh, established harmony, rhythm, uh, lyrics. You've very much boxed in the possibilities for me melody. Okay, remember there's music in the lyrics already. So that uh, to a large extent, and at least this is the case for me, and I don't think I'm special in this regard. Um, to a large extent, you you kind of will find melody in there automatically or semi, you know, something semi-definite. Mm, uh, yeah, there will still be choices to make, and the four elements will shift around a bit, as we talked about, as they kind of settle in and nestle up against one another and lock into each other. But melody is pretty straightforward once you have the other three pretty well developed. Okay, And I think melody is one, it, it may be the element people struggle with most, and again, I think I mentioned this when we talked about it. I saw a website once on how to write songs that said, well, first start with a great melody. I think that's exactly backwards wrong. Um, start with the other three elements and melody will emerge, okay? You know, I mean, yes, you can whistle, you can, you can hum a... Uh, a melody uh, from scratch and more power to you if you're good at that and that's great uh, there's nothing wrong with that at all I'm not advising against that I think it's easier to start with the other elements and melody will emerge from that okay so that's sort of the review back to the two main points I want to leave you with in this series the first and probably the most important is to give yourself space to fool around on your instrument, which includes your voice. I'm, I've been assuming that you probably play either guitar or piano, which are the two main songwriting instruments. Discover new chords, 
even if by accident or mistake. I have several songs that were born, and I kid you not, from mistakenly putting my fingers down on the guitar fretboard in a way that I didn't intend. I was going for a chord, and one finger hit a string in a fret that I didn't in intend, and I heard something that I liked, and I explored that a little bit, okay? Okay, and that helped then in turn to drive a chord progression, okay? This works for rhythm too. If you play guitar, strum a different way than usual. Find a different time signature. Two or three strums alone can define a groove. Uh, sometimes I'll pick a little string of notes in some rhythm, which will help define a groove and harmony as I transition it into strumming. And I'm just going to demonstrate that with one of my oldest songs called uh, I Never Knew, which I started by with this, uh, this little picking thing, or this little lick, I guess you could call it, and I hope I can still play it. It's been a long time. And I'll play that a few times, and then I'll play the chord progression that I figured out only after coming up with this lick um, was the harmony underlying the lick, okay? So... That's one way, perfectly valid way, to approach um, uh, coming up with something. It's just another way of fooling around, okay? Uh, I already talked about allowing phrases to float in and out of your head. Write them down if you like them, okay? I guess the sum of this is open yourself up to the infinite possibilities of these musical elements and their combinations. The more you do this, the easier it gets. The other top line thing I want you to remember is to spare a thought for the poor listener of your song. And I don't mean poor because he's suffering listening to your song. I mean, it just as, it, 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 just as uh, writers pay attention to the work the reader needs to do, listeners are working too. So spare a thought for them, and the key thing I mean by that is to keep things fresh and interesting for the listener's ear. And by the way, you're the most important listener, so keep things interesting and fresh for yourselves. This is why I like to venture outside the home quadrant, why I search for new rhythms, why I like to sing variations of the melody in both verses and chorus, why I vary the dynamics to match the feel of the lyrics. All these things and more create interest, which is an important component of your songwriting. Okay? Entice the listener's ear to want more. Now, I risk offending some people, but just as an example, I've never been a big fan of, uh, for example, um, Irish ballads or shanties mainly because, at least in my experience, it's all a little samey to me, okay? One verse is the same as the next in style and feel, melody and rhythm, and it kind of tires my ear, okay? I can see some charm in it, but it gets stale for me pretty quickly. Change things up. This will also help you see more of the possibilities inherent in the music you're creating. The freshness will drive you further to new places in your music. So, I think I've done more or less what I set out to do in this series, and I hope you've benefited at least a little bit from it. Hope you'll come back to my channel to check out new songs from time to time. I wish you well in your songwriting, which 
really can be enormously fulfilling as it is for me. And I'll send you off with a final wish to stay in tune.